Welcome back to our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and we're starting today's episode under a beautiful sunset. I'm telling you, I think I'm really starting to get the hang of these colors on this uh, whole 4K situation. So, we are starting here at the Lake Facing Grif uh, Grace, which is the first one that we have here at Liernia of the Lakes. So, we are on the border of unknown, as far as this playthrough goes anyway. So this is officially going to be new territory. We're going beyond Limgrave, and uh, I'm really excited about this. So the first thing we have here is a familiar face, which is Bach. And uh, I did already talk to him on my previous attempt to start this recording. For some reason, my frame rate like went completely ballistic during my last attempt. So uh, I cut it about five minutes in and just decided to retry. And all that did was cost us a little bit of dialogue with Bach, where he had mentioned that uh, he remembers that we helped him by giving him his sewing needle back. And now he's going to give us um, his services for free, which is going to be, uh, he's going to be our seamstress. Bach the seamster, at your service, master. Ready to make adjustments to your garments. Seamster. Did I say seamstress? No, that would be the, the female terminology, I believe. He's, Bach is a man, so I guess he would be a seamster. Master, I was wondering, do you ever make adjustments to your garb yourself? I would, well, rather you let me do the job when possible, please. I don't ask anything in return, you know, and, well, I am your personal seamster after all. Well, I've never had one of those, so <laughs> sure, I'll take it. So this is an option that you have at the Grace already. You can already do this yourself if you want to, and it'll give you a preview window down here below if you decide to go with the uh, the change, but usually it'll cost you about 500 runes to do it yourself, whereas Bach will do it for free, because he's a baller. So I really like the Confessor hood, and I definitely like the cape on the Confessor armor, so we're not going to use this, but the only real uh, benefit to it is it'll make your gear just a little bit lighter. So if you are literally just one or two units away from being the preferred equipment load that you want to be maybe this is an option for you but i will not sacrifice the the confessor the confessor's fashion i just won't do it so please yes i am leaving bach but uh fret not everything will be okay so liernia of the lakes uh, for some reason i don't know why this is kind of a nocturnal series have you noticed I seem to only want to uh, start these videos when it's getting to be nighttime. Yep, it is night. All right. So, good thing it's not super dark because I messed around with the gamma settings and the color, so my screen shouldn't be super dark. I shouldn't have to have the lantern 24-7 anymore. But we're going to do this first area right here, and you know what graveyards mean, right? There's going to be some skeletons. Not a big deal for us because we've got strike damage. But we do have a purple item here, which typically means it's something good. That is Academy Scroll. It'll be something for selling. Get this guy. And then we will not let you up. Or you. Alright. Easy peasy. And I'm just gonna, like, ease my way through this area. I really want to take in the lakes because it's one of my favorite areas in the game. There's lots and lots to do here. I mean, just looking over this cliff, we're going to make our way down here through this encampment. There's going to be like some fire monk guys, and it's going to be really cool. Let me get off torrent real quick. I just want to get a quick sneaky peeky of what's to come. So there's our next grace, and at that grace, we're going to be able to buy a really good shield from this merchant here. And then there's an ever jail boss right here that we're going to smash right away, probably. And then uh, this section out here... I guess this is what you can kid, could really consider to be the of the lakes portion of Liernia. Because that's all going to be water out there. Nope. Wrong button. Alright. I really should be picking up the row of fruit because it is something that is required in order to make the exalted flesh as well as to feed torrent and... Ooh, an arteria leaf. And we're under specific instructions, if you recall, to treat Torrent with respect. 
And we will. And you know how I feel about my mushrooms, too. Alright. Sorry if I seem distracted. I keep glancing over periodically just to make sure that my capture screen is not bugging out. Because this shit was entirely too expensive to not do exactly what the fuck it's supposed to do. You know what I mean? Alright. So our first pit stop before we head down into the lakes is we're going to grab this NPC as well as the item near him that is super important. Bam! Got another sacred tear. Our flasks are going to be even stronger. You're tarnished, aren't you? Then perhaps you could spare some runes. Believe it or not, I studied Blintstone sorceries at the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. For a small donation, I'd be happy to share my knowledge. You know what's ironic about this is 10 runes is nothing, right? Like, anybody has 10 runes. That's like, that's like asking somebody for a dollar out on the streets. Everybody's got it. Well, maybe not cash. Nobody really carries cash anymore. You know what I mean, though. Everybody has a dollar they can spare. But it's the principle here. He says he'd be happy to share these with us for a 10 rune donation, and then he proceeds to sell them to you. Not cool. Well, bless you. Bless you. You're a true saint. My name is Topes. Presuming you're interested, I can teach you sorceries, as promised. Only, none of them are particularly great. Yeah, well listen here, Thops. I saw that H. You guys recognize his voice, by chance? He is 100% the same voice actor as Crestfallen Knight in Dark Souls 1. And yes... They suck. Uh, this is about the only useful one that he sells, hence it is the most expensive. Uh, this is essentially like having a lantern, but the sorcery version, I guess. Apologies, friend. I'm afraid my meager sorceries are no match for your generosity. All oh, right, I can tell you what I know about this place. That should help a bit. You've seen that structure to the north, towering over the water. That's the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. Where we study glintstone sorceries. Only its doors have been closed for quite some time now. After they declared they wouldn't interfere with the shattering, the Academy cast repelling seals on the east gate leading to the capital, and the south gate leading here. As you might have guessed, the seals are still active, making entry to the Academy impossible without a glintstone key. And so I'm stuck here. A fledgling sorcerer, with little chance of acquiring a key. When they cast the seals, I'd just popped out. And now I'm uprooted from my place of learning. Hmm. A sorry ass like you not being able to achieve their goals? Imagine that. So, you'll notice his dialogue now says about the glenstone key and about selling. Because there's only two ways to obtain a glenstone key at this point in the game, and that's the, to either progress Selen's quest line until she gives you one, or we can head out into the lakes pretty damn far out into the lakes to where out on the water, and there's a dragon out there that is uh, magic instead of fire, and uh, he will be guarding another key. So you don't have to beat him to get it, I don't think. He's just right behind him, but that'd be the easiest key for you to get if you were hellbent on getting in there early or giving it to this clown. Why not find yourself a glintstone key? Without one, you can't pass through the academy, and you'll never reach the Erdtree capital. And if you find an extra glintstone key, perhaps, once you've tied up all your loose ends, and I can be very patient, would you consider donating to me? I know it. I'm a bluntstone. Nary a hint of talent for sorcery, but still, my place is at the academy. Find yourself a glintstone key. Without one, you can't pass through the academy. And you'll never reach the Erdtree. Okay. You've taken an apprenticeship with Selen. Well, that is something. Selen was well known. The most promising sorceress in the history of the academy. I followed her at school. But there may as well have been an ocean between us. But Selen was expelled from the academy. Accused of unthinkable treatment of certain sorcerers under the name of the Graven Witch. I still don't believe the accusations. The illustrious Selen would never do such things. 
Hmm. I wonder how well you know her. Okay, so. That's about the extent of his quest line. We just need to find an extra key, and finding two of them is pretty easy. Wow, this looks amazing. Check that out. We have another church up there with a minor herb tree behind it. And then this here, this is exactly what he was talking about. This is Ray Lucaria. And I think it's really cool how, in a, I swear, I do this in every single freaking playthrough on my channel. I end up looking through the, mon not the monocle or the binoculars or whatever they give you, and I end up looking at levels from super far away and pointing out the little details about them that you can't actually interact with until you get there. Like this staircase, for example. Do you, do you see this winding staircase on the right side? The boulders roll down on that. And I think it's interesting that you can see that from here because you can't see what's happening with it because it's out of render distance. But um, yeah, we're going to be dealing with boulders rolling down that set of steps. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then Mount Gelmir. This looks really, really good at night. And you can see Volcano Manor over here. And then there's a constellation above us. Wow, the visual. I didn't even notice that. Holy shit. There's like stars and stuff that are clearly depicted. Nebulas even. Wow, and it looks like they even edited in actual constellations. Okay, we are not about to get stuck stargazing. No, sir. Wrong button. Okay, let's go up here first, and then that there is uh, actually the tutorial area. That is the Chapel of Anticipation. That's where we smashed the uh, Grafted Scion, and we'll be able to get back there at some point. It's, uh, it's not impossible to get back there. It is completely cut off, as you can see. It's on its own cliff. There's no way to get there by traditional means, but who says we have to be traditional about it? All right, a Crystal Bud. It's our first time picking up that new material. We're off to a good start. Oh boy. There's no way these guys could possibly come alive, right? Oh, get off. Okay. So let's see what we're dealing with here. Is it just one more? Nope, it's an axe guy. Okay. X guy's got poise. Gotta watch out for these dudes. Shoo! And they do like half my health in one hit. Damn. No, for the love of God, that guy can't come back to life. Eat that. I just want to grab this item. That's all I wanted. We did get a flask back, though. That's good. We got a couple warming stones. I'll take it. Damn, that axe guy was kind of beefy. Cool. So that should be pretty much everything that we need to cover up here on this side of the cliff. Now we can actually start heading down and uh, go into the lakes. And the way you do that is you can essentially just kind of follow the path down here. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty obvious once you see it. I'll get these fruit so I can eat my strong meat later when I need the extra damage. And then this encampment right here that we're passing is uh, interesting. It's uh, not super difficult. Like there's not going to be an insanely tough mini boss or crazy enemies here. Nothing to that extent. Um, it's going to be rather normal enemies. And it's entirely skippable. Like, you can even jump down right here if you want. If you don't feel like running through here. But there's going to be some interesting fire stuff over here. Okay, that did alright. No. So, they don't throw fire bombs here. They throw glintstone sorcery at you. These are Ray Lucaria Knights. We are well, and they gave us a tier 2 stone. Not bad. Mmm. Wow, that felt good. Smack those guys like that. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, gentlemen. Alright, 
that was relatively easy. So I don't want Torrent for the rest of this. I think we're going to uh, let's have some fun. Let's switch to on foot. We'll take these guys down real sneaky. Confessor style. And we do have darkness on hand, so we can use that if things get too hairy. But when you are raiding these camps like this, it's very important to use your eyeballs. And uh, lots of enemies can be sneaky. Sometimes you don't see them. They, may, they look like they're asleep, or maybe they're on the ground. And it seems like, well, yeah, we've got another cookbook that we can look at in a second. But just keep your eyes peeled. For enemies that look like they might be uh, they might be sleeping or incapacitated, but they're going to stand up and fight you the instant you aggro them. Let's do backstab comparisons. 291. Okay. That's not bad. Shit. I don't want this guy to see me. Which way did he go? Oh, he went in in. <laughs> Shit. He's returning to his post. Let's sneak up on him. Confessor style. So what I want to compare is our main weapon and our offhand weapon. So our flail was 291, was the backstab, the de the backstab damage, and it's at plus 7. Whereas uh, the misericord we have is at plus 3. But what you need to look at is the critical number. So it's 100 right here on the flail, and it's 140 on this. And now that extra 40% may not seem like much, but let's do a direct comparison, and we will see what the difference is. And keep in mind, there's a four-level difference between them. It's 291 versus what? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. 620. So the multiplier that happens with the critical damage, that's what you need to be worried about. And I know you guys saw that little shiny glow, didn't you? Did it catch your eye? Yeah, here we go. So we finally found one of the tents that actually has something in it. And look at that. The Ray Lucaria banner. Pretty cool. Damn it. I keep hitting the wrong button for torrent. Okay. Not bad. Our first encampment. Pretty easy. And now we've officially hit the point where we are at the water. So we'll light this grace. Let's see if we can talk to Melina or anything by resting at it. Nope, doesn't look like it. I'm going to do this, though, just for a second. This I would consider this to be maintenance as well. Pretty much all of this stuff I don't want, so... I'll hang on to these just in case... I want to power stance them or something. Uh, we're definitely, definitely going to use the claymore, so hang on to that. The Uchi is 100% worth using. I just don't know if I'm going to actually use it on this character. We don't want any of these. And then we're going to have enough faith for that soon. I think we only need like two more points of faith for that thing. I'll hang on to the whip. We need 30 faith for that, and it's not entirely useful to us at the moment. Um, okay. That ought to do it. And uh, we got this fist weapon in the last video. I want to show this off to you guys. This thing's pretty cool. I mean, we literally have a dragon on our arm. It hits like a fist weapon. Same exact moveset. The uppercut and everything. But, the weapon art? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's really, really good against groups of enemies that are weak to fire. And that's going to be the only situation where we use that attack. Because if you try to use it for anything else, you are kind of screwed. All right, so let's talk to our merchant friend over here after we get this mushroom and steal his butterflies. Yes, yes, yes. You're new around here. Surprised you found me in my little nook. 
No matter, no matter. Your money's as good as anyone else's. Why don't you take a look at my wares? Oh, but don't ask me how I got my hands on them, eh? I like how all of these nomadic merchants are kind of different. They're not all the same. <laughs> some of them seem interesting. Some of them seem almost kind of mischievous. But this guy has particularly good stuff. He has the Astrologer starting set, which is pretty good. But this in particular right here, the Kite Shield is good. It's a little bit on the heavier side compared to the other shields that are comparable to it. But it's got 51 stability, which is nice. That's, that's a decent amount. And it looks relatively good. I'd say it's probably the best looking shield next to the Knight Shield and the Medium Class. And uh, I like it a lot. He also sells bolts, ammunition. He's got a cookbook so we can do crystal darts, spellproof dried liver, and shattered er or sh shatter shard arrows. We're definitely going to buy that. And then he has the S stock if you would like a different kind of thrust weapon. He does have some of these, though. These, I think, are completely worth buying off of him. We probably don't need these, because we have plenty of those. But you can also get the lantern from this guy if you hadn't bought it up to this point. Alright, so what I would like to do now is we want to get up to there. We're going to go grab that item after we destroy the Evergel boss. I think that's the first thing I want to do in this particular area. So we're just going to stay right here, hug the cliff until we find the spirit spring. Should be right up here. We are close to the map fragment. We may as well grab that. I mean, it would be stupid not to. I mean, we do need that thing pretty bad. Um, let's see. Where is it? It should be right here somewhere. We are very, very close to it. These guys are summoning... Uh, vengeful spirits is what they're called and they do hurt when they hit you so <laughs> I don't recommend just getting hit let's do this let's rest at this grace so we can reset this shit okay let's reset aggro okay we got another cookbook all right Let's see on the map. Okay, we completely passed it up on the map. We need to go right here. So, I'll just create a marker for ourselves. And that way we can't miss it. And we are essentially just following the blue laser beam, which I can see it on our compass, but I can't see it in the sky. There it is. Okay. Here we go. Here is the map fragment. Surrounded by these clowns. Boom. Now we can take the spirit spring. Let's get down to business. Alright. Check this out. Well, is it going to let me? Listen. There we go. All right, so what do you know? It has opened up and it went pretty far for us. It is uh, Eastern Limgrave is what we picked up. Nice, nice, nice. We'll get rid of that. And our first order of business is to take down this boss. The Malefactor's Everjail. So this guy is pretty easy. He's uh, looks kind of like Smog, I guess, would be a, like a good way to describe him. Um, I'm interested to try, to try and experiment against him, because he, I guess, is considered like a tarnished. He's pretty humanoid, so I kind of want to try to do the frenzy attack on him, if I have the time. Um, darkness would also be interesting to use on him. I kind of want to try that. But he uses a lot of fire, so let's do this. Let's get some fire resistance going. Let's bubble up. And I do want to experiment with the Kukri. All right. And he's got a flail, just like us. <laughs> so these abilities that he has are pretty devastating. Um, the fire, in particular, hits very hard. And when he casts that, throwing items, you know, whatever you want, just don't get hit with the explosion. Like that. 
he's got the uh, the wild swings going, which is pretty cool. So let me do this. Oh, come on, don't get stuck. We're in the middle of a fight, dude. Yeah, let's do this. So if he has darkness on him, he does not, though. Shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was not paying attention to him at all. I was looking at my items. Um, okay, that's kind of embarrassing. Normally, he's incredibly easy to beat on the first try, but I guess you'd have to be paying attention for that to happen, right? Let me move my microphone a little bit. It's kind of getting in the way. I always do this thing, like when I start recording, I always throw my microphone in a spot where it's like dipping down on the top of my screen to where I basically have to like move my head to be able to see the uh, the compass. So I'm going to fix that. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that dried liver is what kept me alive when he did that. Now, darkness didn't work. I mean, I noticed that against him. He stayed in the cloud long enough to where it probably should have procced against him, but it doesn't look like it worked. So, now we know that didn't work. Wow, he can outpoise me completely. Interesting. Let's do this. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. That was bad. Shit, this guy hits hard, man. All right, let's do this. See if we can get a guard counter on him, huh? Come on. I'm going to get your ass with a guard counter. You best believe it, man. Come on. Now you can heal all you want, man. <laughs> oh, the roll catch on the mace, or the, the roll catch on the flail is so good. I love it. Now, don't do that. Come on, we're trying to have some fun here. Guard counters. And then it leaves a pool of fire on the ground. You do have to be careful. You end up getting that pyromancy for beating him, which is really cool. Um, it's it's kind of demanding, though. He does not want to get stance broken. Come on, man. I'm trying to be an entertaining content creator. I'm trying to experiment. These people want to know what's going to work against you. I mean, that's fine. We'll just beat him. <laughs> I really wanted to try to get a critical with Misericord on him, but it does not look like it's going to happen. But you get Flame of the Fell God. And uh, this is a pretty... Well, it's going to kick me out of the Avager. We can look at it as soon as we, as soon as we land outside. So this flame incantation is pretty good, but it's demanding. It needs 41 faith. We don't have anywhere near that yet. It does take two slots and it costs 50 FP. That's over half a bar for us at this point. It is super duper costly and it's not easy to put on your build. It takes up quite a bit of space and the resources are pretty, uh, pretty brutal. The usages anyway. And uh, it's great though. It really is awesome, especially if you use... If you use talismans, items, and uh, equipment, and incantations, and everything else that increases your fire damage, anything that makes fire damage go up, or incantation damage in general, um, is very... Smoke bombs? Y'all understand that I literally graduated from ninja college. Oh, come here, you asshole. So these are essentially weaker versions of the guys that we saw out there in the Dragon Barrows. The smaller guys that are out in the fields. 
Here, let's do this. Well, I can't. Let's just pick them off with our Kukri since we have plenty. Well, if they don't dodge. So yeah, I don't I don't want to lock onto these guys. Because locking onto them is kind of bad. There we go. Okay, that was kind of risky, but got the job done. There we go. Now there's one left. Oh my goodness, the strong attack knocked him down. That is very satisfying. And then we got our blue flask back too. And our kukri back. Killer. Now the only reason I'm scaling to the top of this hill is because I recall there being a pathway up here. I'm not going to fight the rest of them. We don't need to. Here we go. So this is the pathway that's going to lead to like the uh, the fire camp type thing I was talking about. And I want to grab this. There we go. Those are what I wanted specifically. Since we're going to be using the ballista a lot. And uh, it's a really useful weapon. I wanted to grab those bolts. And the rest of this honestly doesn't really need to be tampered with. We don't, we don't have to stay up here for the, any of the rest of this stuff. Because we're about to start heading off into the western direction and we don't have the map for that yet. So I really think we should stick east and we should follow this road here first before we do any of this western stuff. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's actually do that. Um, yeah. So we'll head back here. Let's actually see how close we are to leveling up. Okay, we have exactly enough. <laughs> Alright, and then one more point, and we should be able to use... Let's see, we want to head this way. We want to get up this cliff here so we can make it to the road, and then... So I'll give you an idea of what we're going to do real quick. We're going to run across the water, we're going to use this path to get up here to the road, and then we are going to head down this way towards Limgrave. So we'll do the, uh, the southern half of the road, and then we'll work our way up this way. And we'll just kind of, like, go up until we get here so that is the plan but uh yeah good stuff we are almost to the point where we can use our scythe and i tested that scythe out just a little bit on my other character not a lot so i don't have a ton of experience with it I have very limited time with it in my hands, and uh, I think it deserves a little bit more than that. So the blind girl should be over here now, potentially, maybe. This game loves it when I'm wrong, though. Okay, there are dogs, though. We really can't mess around right here. Come here, Miss Shabriri Grapes. Where are you? Stop making me wrong all the time. Oh, the fucking shrimps, man. The giant shrimps. <laughs> Terrible. Here she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Miss Shabiri, Grapes Girl. We're going to find another one over here for her. Hello? There's someone there. Would you donate any Shabiri grapes in your possession to me? I'm on a pilgrimage in search of the distant light. And when I eat one of those grapes, I can feel the light in the back of my eyes. Yes, I've heard the story. Alright. Let's do that, shall we? There should be one pretty close by. Should be. It's somewhere inside these ruins is one of them. This is, this is kind of a cluster of ruins, but uh, I do believe the grape is in one of them. So we just need to find it. Got some mushrooms... I'll take mushrooms over grapes any day, I tell ya. We got a teleporter over here that I am not going to take. Not yet, at least. We can take it later. And then we're about to stumble upon a battlefield. Again. It's exciting stuff. 
Man, and these machines here, these are like broken down machines. We're going to find the real working versions of them pretty soon in some of the later levels, but these versions of them are destroyed and not working. Stop up here and get some lore candy. We've officially hit the road that I was talking about, so we're going to follow it down this way. It's kind of our prerogative right now. This marks Millennia's southward march, the Blade of Michaela and her clean rot knights. Grant her wings never to be clipped. Oh man. We're gonna clip her wings, alright. That's a hell of a boss, let me just tell you. Like, once we get to her, shit, man. It's probably probably the most difficult boss fight in the game, in my opinion. I I find it to be pretty difficult. Alright, so no more torrent. We do not want to fuck around on this part. This part can get ugly. So what do we got? I'm looking, I'm looking. We got one soldier right here. One soldier right there. Let's do this, shall we? Well, he saw me though. <laughs> Except he didn't really. <laughs> Strange. Alright, let's see if we can get darkness to work on this guy. Hey, it worked. Well, <laughs> didn't do much for us, unfortunately. It did blind him long enough for me to get this guy, but they don't die in one backstab, so maybe we should do this, huh? Do the old bait. Oh boy, the glintstone shit. Strong attack. There we go. Oh shit, you're alive. Yeah, that shit sucks. Come here, man. You get this backstab on you. Oh yeah, that did plenty. I think it's going to be pretty useful. So that would have been the smart thing to do in that situation is uh, probably should have used darkness and then this is a hidden path right here. Come on. Come on. Hit me. Bro. So yeah, probably should have used darkness and then uh, use the uh, Misericord. That would have been smart. Probably would have made that skirmish significantly easier. Okay, two-finger heirloom. And a Shabriri grape that's just floating. It's just sitting down here. It's not on a corpse or anything. Okay, we should ponder on that for a second. Hi. I learned a new trick. Are you ready? See that? <laughs> Y'all are not going to dodge my guard counters anymore. Okay, and then we got the Cuckoo Glintstone, which is what they were throwing at us. Shit. Smash. Man, that is such a game changer. Ever since I learned about doing that, suddenly it's like, this is not a problem anymore at all are you gonna get up no okay we'll check in here we'll destroy their belongings because pillaging is more important than respecting our surroundings because if anybody grew up listening to good music they would know that happiness lies in disrespecting your surroundings are you picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, we already checked through here. Coast is clear. Found your grape. Hello? Would you donate? I'm on a pilgrimage, and when I eat... You're not like the others who give me grapes, are you? They rest their trembling hands upon me. Howling wordlessly, they gently stroke my eyes. Their frail fingers, emaciated. 
Yet still, they give me the grapes. But you seem somehow firmer. Okay, I want to know who these eyeball rubbers are. Who comes up to her and rubs her eyeballs when they give her the grapes? Who else is supplying the grapes to her? You are most kind indeed. May the blessing of the fingers be upon you. Now, the light that she's seeking, I have mentioned this already, but I'm 100% convinced that that is the frenzied flame. So... We're going to have to confirm that later, though, because we'll get her quest line all the way completed. So now, this is the way that we want to go. We're going to follow the road down. I'm not worried about the patrollers. Let's just get to the road. And there's plenty of stuff off to the side of the road, you know, and I'm not going to forget about that stuff. So we're not going to miss any of the items, that much I can promise you, but I do want to make it to the end here for a specific item, a weapon that I would like to use. So these balloons, when you shoot them, generally they drop enemies and uh, runes as well. And this here is not necessarily a brand new enemy type we and we encountered some of these guys in uh, the lower part of limgrave but they are much worse this time around like they really really suck here like they're in numbers all the time and as you can see i mean we're not we're not doing the same amount of damage to these guys as we would the enemies in limgrave like we're having significantly harder time killing these guys even with our awesome upgraded flail Give me that. I knew that was up here. My ADHD was tingling. But not that these guys are, you know, overpowered or anything. You know, that's not the case. We can still beat them in just a couple hits, but in Limgrave, if we encountered this enemy type, we'd be killing them in probably one smack. So. All right. And watch out for the puppy. There we go. We make use of our our reach. Oh, come here, puppy. Okay, I suppose since the dog is the only thing we're fighting, we can lock onto this guy. There we go. We use the spinning action to our advantage. Yeah, get that bleed. Okay, so let's see how much damage we do with Kukri on this enemy type. What the fuck is that? Is that another dog hiding in the bushes? Oh my goodness. How mean. Oh, he dodged. There we go. Alright, so this part, I do not recommend fighting all of these guys at the same time. I really, really don't. So let's do this, huh? Well. Yeah, we'll do a twofer. Eee, those guys suck. <laughs> you see that damage? Ow. There we go. Let's be smart, huh? Let's use our spinny weapon to our advantage. Yeah. Got some arrows and some fruit. Okay. And now... These guys... I will take out just like this. Let's see if we can get them again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll we'll wait for him to finish his spaz. And then we'll wait for this guy to finish his, his arrow spaz. Okay. And these guys, I believe, are pretty susceptible to strike damage. So, I recommend 
using something that has blunt force if you're going to fight them. And since we kind of went through the grass, you know, like we kind of snuck through and didn't fight uh, directly on the road, we can kind of explore off to the side here and make sure we didn't miss anything. Just make sure there's no items tucked away or anything like that. Because these games love to do that. Let's make it to the top here and see if there's something hiding up here. Nope. Okay. Well, that's perfectly fine. Another dog? Wow. Let's do this, though. Let's shoot this down. There we go. Bam. Um, it's floating. There's still a lock on there? I don't have an answer for that one. Sorry. <laughs> we'll be careful getting down as not to murder Torrent or ourselves. Where's this dog at? There we go. That's so weird. So let's... What happens if we shoot this? If there's nothing there? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Now we do have one more. So we'll go get this one. And there are some enemy near enemies nearby, so let's not... Uh, let's not get too crazy. But we will shoot this. Why do I feel compelled to, like, empty the health bar? That's so strange. <laughs> okay, shiny. No. Yeah, you can... Oh, boy. Oh, I thought we were going to be able to use the roof. Okay, look. There we go. That's what I wanted. See, that's how smoothly it should have gone. Okay. Is that another Everjail? No, that's the one we already did. We can see it from here. Nice. I love how connected this game is. So here's our checkpoint. And then this should be the cutoff for that enemy type. We shouldn't have to worry about the... Uh, we shouldn't have to worry about the assholes that shoot the arrows and stuff and go freaky with the spears. Not for the rest of this episode, anyway, but, um... I am nearing the end point of this episode. So I need to hurry down here. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I need to hurry down here, and I need to get this item that I want. Okay. Not worried about those guys at all. They shouldn't move. Need to kill this guy. Now, this is an unrestrained giant. He was pulling a cage, you can see. He's got the carriage back here, but, uh... Let's see if we can get a bleed on him, maybe? Ah! Alright. See if the Kukri works well. Yeah! <laughs> Alright. So now let's be smart when we finish this guy. Come on, man. And then hitting them in the head is a pretty good idea, like after they do that slam down. I would recommend trying to hit them in the head when they do that, because that's going to be your best source of damage against these guys. There we go. And because this guy doesn't have the sword, we don't really have a whole lot to worry about with him. Yeah, he was pretty easy to finish. I'm pretty sure he can still drop the giant sword, though. So this here. This is what we're after. Hell yeah, the tree spear. So this is a great spear weapon. It's in the same category as the lance. Uh, it's heavier by half a unit, but it scales with faith. 
And it does require some dexterity to use, though. We have enough, thankfully. But um, this is a really, really cool weapon. It's uh, got holy damage on it. And it just looks awesome. I mean, look at that thing. We're heavy as shit with it. <laughs> but it's a cool weapon. We have 247 damage with it without upgrading it. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> so that is probably going to end up getting its fair share of my uh, somber smithing stones. And we have this random silver firefly over here that I always pick up just because. And don't worry about platforming down there. There shouldn't be an item. All right. So we got our stabby weapon. And... Uh, I should probably explain this to you on the way back to the Grace, so you guys can get a feel for how I'm going to treat this playthrough and how I like to stay prepared. Uh, I think that at all times on your character, you should have every single damage type available to you for switching the situation to your benefit. You need to have something with strike damage, you need to have something with thrust damage, or pierce damage, you need to have something with slash damage, and then you need something that's got all elemental capabilities, which for us is going to be throwing items like these. So we have magic damage that we can use. Uh, we have fire damage, you know, like we, we have sleep. We have as many elements as we could possibly need in our throwing tools. But specifically what I'm talking about is for your main hand. So we have strike damage, our Knight Rider flail. And our slash damage is probably going to be this guy, the Sham Shear. And then thrust damage for us is going to be this guy. And then slash damage I'm going to reserve for the Scythe here. So, we do have one more point of faith before we can actually use it, but I think it's going to be a good weapon for us. Um, I think it's going to fit this character pretty well. So, alright. But that is uh, going to be the end of today's episode. So we are officially here in Lyernia of the Lakes, and I do believe that some of these next coming episodes are probably going to be more so exploring than actually going into dungeons and doing all of that, because there's a lot to cover in this place. And uh, I kind of want to do it at uh, a more leisure and lax pace. So, um, thank you guys so much for joining me on episode 20, crazy as that is, of the in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I will catch all of you guys in the next video.